this is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Today we'll be discussing the various methods to make an implant supported bridge. During this demonstration we'll be discussing the conical connection. So using two implants it makes it a bit more tricky but it's just important to know what are the different ways you can connect these two implants together. You look at the Replace CC implant from Nobel BioCare, you'll notice that it has a platform shift on top plus the 45 degree bevel. And this is important when you're picking out your impression coping because some of the impression copings will go down inside of the implant. These are called engaging impression copings, while other ones will sit just on top of the flat aspect of the platform shift as shown right here. So when do you use one over the other? This is an important concept for everyone to understand. So if we look at the main features between engaging and non-engaging is the hex. So engaging means it's hexed, where non-engaging means non-hexed. So you get anti-rotational forces by attaching together. So if you're doing a bridge where you're going down to the implant, you're going to have non-engaging type of connections. Whereas if you have a hex on it, it means you're going to have to do some different things to the uh, particular system when you're going to put it in place. So we'll have a look at this uh, up close so you can kind of understand the concept. So we'll start with the screw retain non-engaging to implant type of choice. The screw retain non-engaging bridge begins when you take an impression of the platform. So the bridge is going to directly connect to the top of the implant. So not to the inside but to the top. So it's important to use a impression coping with a B on it to make sure you're getting the accurate impression because you don't want an impression of inside of the implant in the conical connection, you want to have it on the platform itself, which is critical. To take this impression, you use a bridge impression coping, which is non-engaging, so it doesn't have a hex on top of it. And this is the important concept because we're actually not going down inside of the hex to take this impression, we're taking it on top of the platform shift. It's important not to use the engaging impression coping during this particular impression because that would be taking an impression of the internal aspect of the conical connection and not the top of the platform shift. And this is critical because you would actually have an intolerance, a vertical intolerance of the bridge sliding up and down which can lead to stresses on the implant system like stresses on the fracturing the porcelain or fracturing the screw. So you need to use the proper impression coping when you're doing so. The bridge impression copings will have a B on the side of them and you'll see these uh, little um, wings that stick out. So I usually like to have the wings go buccolingual so I can add some stabilizing wire later on and I'll show you that in a minute. So as I said these are not hexed so they'll kind of spin around a little bit so you have to kind of hold them and orient them but they're very easy to seat. You'll see that this one's also flared so we want some emergence profile on the particular bridge so we're using flared impression copings to create this effect. After I've uh, taken an x-ray to confirm where they're seated, I'll use some stabilizing wire from Keystone Industries and uh, then I'll stabilize them with some resin. Now a neat design feature of the platform shift on the Replace CC is that once you cover the yellow here, you'll still have this 45 degree bevel which is great for using for bridges because it allows for a soft tissue cuff which is like a platform shift. There are a number of choices you can do now that you have the model made. You could use a titanium with porcelain fused over it. You could use a zirconia substructure with porcelain over it. Or you could have a full gold or even a PFM gold type of bridge, all to be screw retained to the top of the implant. And these are great choices because then you can get them off. This is a nice feature. One of my favorite non-engaging type of bridges is the zirconia bridge you can uh, really make a big structure and not have the overall gold cost. So it's a non-engaging type of uh, structure, meaning that you're going to be screw retained on top of the platform. The next screw retained bridge we'll look at is the screw retained to multi-units. A multi-unit is an abutment that gets screwed on top of the implant, which maintains the platform shift. However, it makes a flat platform for you to put a bridge on top. So here's the multi-unit applied to the implant and you can see that when you do this the multi units get screwed into the implant they get tightened down and then an impression is taken of the multi unit 
with the multi-unit impression copings. Our bridge would be fabricated. That's going to be screw retained on top of the multi-unit. You can see that then a small prosthetic screw, which is torqued to 15 newton centimeters. This is kind of how the bridge is kept on place. You can use 17 degree and also 30 degree abutments to tip the implant and then bring the implant back to level in the all on four procedure. This is how it's done so you can maintain the direction of the implants and of the bridge and of the screw channels by using these multi-units to bring it up to tissue level. So here we go, we're going to take a multi-unit and screw it down on the implant replica which was showing what the implant would look like. We've left these implants up a little high so you can actually see what the connection would look like. But the multi-unit on the straights, they get tightened down to 35 newton centimeters. If you're using an angle multi-unit, you're down to 15 newton centimeters. So once you take put these on, the limitation is that they use up some of your space. So they use up your prosthetic space, or also called your restorative space. So you have to have enough space to place these. Uh, they do correct angulation, and uh, it does keep it screw retained while maintaining a platform shift, which is very important. Uh, we, we like to have the platform shift if possible. It is thought that having the extra tissue around the top of the implant acts like a seal. So you can see on this you have the platform shifting yellow plus the 45 degree bevel. This both give you a little bit extra tissue around the implant. The multi-unit enables you to still be screw retained because the abutment has a conical shape with a flat shoulder. This conical shape allows you to kind of have angled implants and help them line them up and uh, it's very good in your, when you're doing a roundhouse bridge or a hybrid so that you're able to have implants that aren't really lined up perfectly line up a little bit better, better because of this bevel on top of the multi-unit. When you're taking your impression, these impression copings will stick through the custom tray so you're using a open tray impression technique in this particular system. So you can see um, when these uh, impression copings are on they're going to capture the flat surfaces of the multi-unit and then enable you to make your bridge. I like to attach these with stabilizing wire and resin as well just to give it stability during the impression technique. There's all kinds of options for restorative techniques on these. You can do zirconia, you can do titanium bridges, you can do bars, you can do a whole bunch of different uh, type of concepts. You can even do over dentures on top of them so it's a great option to be looking at. The third option that we can use for bridges is the cement retain bridge in which we're cementing down on two abutments. So we'll typically we'll take an engaging impression coping, go inside and pick up the conical connection and the hex of the implant and then we'll use this to make some abutments that will be screwed down in place and then a bridge will be cemented. The important concept here is to pick up is that you have to pick up the hex and you have to pick up the conical connection in the implant impression in order for that to be transferred to your model. One of the benefits is you maintain the platform shift. However, you sometimes lose the ability to take this off, so you lose retrievability. So you're going to use the impression coping on the right here. The one on the left would not be accurate because you, are, you can't use a non-engaging impression coping because you wouldn't pick up the hex and the uh, conical connection. So you have to use an engaging type of impression coping. My favorite impression coping for this is the 10 millimeter long flared to 5. So I usually like to have flared healing abutments on to help to make this kind of a uh, uh, flared and lots of tissue around the platform shift. So you'll take the impression coping, put it together, go to the mouth, and we're using the patient model here as the mouth, and we want to make sure that that hex fits down into the hex of the implant and so that the conical connection will be snug and so that the little line will come to the top of the implant platform shift so you'll see this on x-ray when you take an x-ray you'll see a little line that comes across the x-ray that confirms that this is seated so uh, as I said before you, you don't want to use um, stabilizing wire between these two impression copings because they don't always line up to each other if they're not lining up to each other, then they're not going to pull out because they're not going to draw. So that you can see the little rubber washer which helps hold it together. You come and take it to the mouth, put it in position, screw it down, making sure that they're in the hex. 
You'll go take an x-ray to confirm this, which is very important. And then this is how you're going to make your model so you can make your abutments and then have your cement retained crown. So it's all about maintaining that hex and maintaining the position. So you use this normally when you have an implant that's not lining up properly for screw retained. We have to go to a system like this where you can see the platform shift gets maintained. And this is maintained because of the 45 degree bevel because it mimics the platform shift. So the platform shift is covered, but the 45 degree bevel helps out. Our fourth option will be the lingual set screw. And we usually use gold adapt abutments and then have a screw that comes in from the lingual. So you'll actually take an impression like I just showed, and then you'll have abutments fabricated that fit down into the hexes. But they'll be oriented, and then you'll position these so that the uh, bridge is going to be held from the lingual using the lingual set screws. So this is another option to make it screw retained when you don't want to be cement retained and keep it so that the bridge is going to be easily retrievable by unscrewing these particular small screws. So the main takeaway lesson is the conical connection implant which has been very successful at maintaining the bone you have to think about the different ways you can do impressions and different techniques. So using you can use an engaging type of impression coping, uh, non-engaging, or a multi-unit, but they'll all be similar kind of concepts to help you to take an impression so you can then you know, take your make your bridge. But the important concept is to know what you're going to do before you start because you're going to have to pick your impression coping prior to doing your impression. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get automatic updates when new videos are released.